Welcome to the Life United Podcast. We are all about helping you know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. We know that today's message is going to be a blessing to you. Thank you, Lord. Well, how many of you are glad to be in church today? Hallelujah. I am really glad to be in church today. Um, you know, I know this is a, kind of a little bit strange deal, but uh, I've been kind of out of the loop for about three weeks. And uh, praise God for Paul Trochel coming and stepping in and ministering. Amen. He brought an awesome word both Sundays that he was here. And uh, we've had a real challenge with our staff. I mean, uh, everybody almost <laughs> seemed like was quarantined or battling symptoms in their body. And, uh, but everybody's recovering. Amen. Yeah. In Jesus name. But one of the things that I learned a long time ago, actually, I learned this back in the, in the nineties, um, when Becky and the girls were in that automobile accident many years ago, some of you know about it, some of you don't, but, but, but the Lord really spoke to me when I, when we were challenged with that and all my girls were in the hospital and, and, um, you know, and then, then, well, it's a long story, but Taylor was in the hospital as well. And, uh, my son, um, all within a matter of days and, um, uh, the Lord just spoke so clearly to me to shrink my world. And, you know, I think sometimes we try to deal with lots of different things and we just keep trying to juggle, keep trying to juggle. Well, I learned that that, that doesn't work too, too well if you really want to bring uh, the power of God and God's deliverance in your life and, and healing in your body. You, you've got to be willing to say, no, here's my little world right here. And I'm going to deal with my little world until it gets better. And uh, so really like for the last, almost the last three weeks, I have literally just kind of shrunk my world and, and not keep it up with what's going on in the world. Uh, you know, I mean, it's not like I don't have some clues and, un and, and understood some things, um, but basically focusing in on healing and deliverance and, and, and God working and, and thank God that he did and he has. And, um, but I'm going to just read this to you. I've read it many, a number of times in different contexts. And I'm going to read this out of the message translation, Habakkuk chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Listen to what it says. God, how long do I have to cry out for help before you listen? How many times do I have to yell, help, murder, police, before you come to the rescue? Why do you force me to look at evil, stare trouble in the face day after day? Anarchy and violence break out, quarrels and fights all over the place. Law and order fall to pieces. Justice is a joke. The wicked have the righteous hamstrung and stand justice on its head. You know, Habakkuk was facing some pretty tough situations. You know, and, and it's, it's amazing to me that when I started this battle back on, actually on the 4th of, of January until this past week, um, it's, I don't mean like I woke up, but I started looking and listening and nothing's changed. It's the same old, same old. Say, well, we got a new president. Yeah, but nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. And uh, in, in fact, to be honest with you, in some ways, I'm very concerned about, about things that have, have changed uh, because of some of the things that, that the president did immediately. Number one, he made abortion a priority. That's not good, folks. You can call that righteous all you want, but that's evil. That's not good. And so uh, there, you know, there, there are uh, other things and I don't want to get into all of it. And, you know, people say, well, all you'd want to talk about is abortion. Well, when 50 million babies die, that's something to talk about. Okay. But, but look, I, I don't want this to be a political statement because look, but <clears throat> when I stepped over into this, the first of the year, things were one way and they're still the, they're still the same. And uh, so you need to understand and realize 
where, where we are, where you are in life, where I am in life, because I want to talk to you about that today. Uh, uh, because the Lord said something to Habakkuk in chapter 2, and I'm, I'm building a foundation here, so just hang with me for just a minute. In Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 2 and 3 in the message, it said, God answered. He said, write this. Write what you see. Write it in big block letters. The vision message is a witness pointing to what's coming. It aches for the coming. It can hardly wait. It doesn't lie. If it seems slow in coming, wait. It's on its way and it will come right on time. So you have to understand and realize that in the midst of all that's, that's happening right now in our nation and really in the world in general, the pandemic and all the, you know, the riots and the sad, um, um, just bro broke my heart to, to see that people literally violated the halls uh, uh, of our Congress. But, but there's still more going on and there's lots of things going on in lots of different Lots of different areas and lots of different things that are happening. I mean, listen, to be honest with you, how are you going to explain to your kids how, how, why they can let a, uh, a boy come in the girl's restroom? Let me just tell you, folks, that's, that's, that's already been signed, signed into law. It's, gonna, it's, it's already there. I read a, a post by one of our church members. And I, I'm not going to mention her name, but as a grandmother. And, and one of her grandkids came to her and said, uh, Grandmother, I don't understand this. And, and she had to explain, explain to this child, this grandchild, that it wasn't right, that it was bad, it was evil, but yet it's the law of the land. So there are lots of things going on. And, 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 <clears throat> and so just so you understand, well, I voted for, for, for Biden. Well, well, God bless you. If you voted for him, then you'll, you'll have to answer for uh, what happens. That, that's just, as, as an American, you have that right. Whoever you vote for, you have a, but, but just don't go hide. Don't go run and hide. If you voted for him, say I voted for abortion. Say I voted for transgender because that's what you did. Okay. Sorry if you get, get upset about that and say, well, you're just being political. Listen, just go read what has already taken place, okay? So nothing's really changed. It's all still evil. There's still lots of darkness out there. And it's not going to get any better if you listen to what I said uh, New Year's Eve before all this that we're seeing now took place. It's not going to get any better. But there is a way for you to live because the Bible says that God answered Habakkuk and said, I am going to give you something. You write it down. You wait on it and because it, it's going to come and it's going to come to pass. So <clears throat> that's what he said. Now, let me jump over to Hebrews because the Hebrew believers were being attacked. They were being challenged. They were being persecuted. They were, they were being treated. In fact, the Bible says that because of their associations with one another, that they literally lost what they owned. They lost their goods. And they did it. And the Bible says they took it joyfully, <clears throat> that, they, that they, they were willing to do that. They were willing to accept that. So listen to what it says in Hebrews 10, verse 35. Listen to this. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, you got to hear what I'm saying today. Don't cast away your confidence, which has great reward. Now listen to this. For you have need of endurance. You have need of endurance. So that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Now then Hebrews quotes Habakkuk. Listen. For yet a little while... And he who is coming will come and will not tarry. But now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but those who believe to the saving of the soul. 
In other words, what, what the writer of Hebrews is trying to get across is, listen, Habakkuk faced things. They were difficult things. They were evil things. They were bad things. But he had to face those things. But yet there was a vision for something good, something great, something supernatural that was coming. And Hebrews says, hey, that's Jesus. Amen. That's Jesus. Now, see, some people say, well, you just get your, you know, stick your head in the, in, you know, in the air. You know, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Well, he is. He is. And, and you need to understand that. You need to know that. We have a promise. And we're going to endure and we're going to wait on that promise. So after, after the writer of Hebrews talked about all of that, he wrote a whole chapter, Hebrews chapter 11, about faith. About faith. And, and men and women of God who believed God, even in adversities, even in difficulties, even in struggles in life, even in problems in their lives, even in problems in their nation, even problems how they were living, they still used their faith. They still released their faith. They still stood by faith. They still stood and believed God. And, and so we, we really call it the hall of fame of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. <clears throat> but something interesting changes in the, next, in the next chapter. Because in Hebrews chapter 12, I want you to listen to what happens here because something different takes place. Because now we're exposed to something different. Now listen to me, follow me. Listen to what it says in verse 1 of chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, that's chapter 11, all the faith people, okay, all the ones that did great things, listen, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Now stop a minute. You go from great faith and the next thing you hear is, hey, you got to deal with some things in your life. You got to lay aside every weight. You've got to lay aside every sin that ensnares you. Why? Because you have to run your race with endurance. It says, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. All right, so now listen to me a minute. You've got a race to run. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world. You have a race to run. You have purpose for your life. God put you here for a purpose right now in your life to run a race for him. And the only way you're going to get that done is to lay aside every weight and sin, which keeps trying to hold you down and hold you back from doing what God wants you to do. Living the life He wants you to live. Living how He wants you to live instead of how you want to live. So what do you do? All right, listen to what it says in verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, it's interesting here because now, now we're looking at this thing from a, hey man, look at all the bad things that are going on in the world, all the trouble, all the problems, all the difficulty, all the things that are happening. And, and, and all of a sudden he says, okay, but here's what you got to do. You have to look unto Jesus. Now, if you look at this in the Greek text, it doesn't say look unto Jesus. It literally says to look away from everything else and unto him. Why? Because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Let me put it to you another way, okay? 
Jesus did something in his earthly ministry and then his death, burial, and resurrection that was totally different from all the other people of faith. Most of them were operating out of obedience or out of a promise that God had specifically given them. But now we walk by a different faith. We walk by the faith that Jesus created. He created the parameters for what we can believe. All you've got to do, if you want to know what you can believe, just go watch what Jesus did when he was on the earth. What was he doing? Creating the parameters of faith you could live by. I know I can be healed because Jesus healed. I also know he can, I can be healed because he bore my sicknesses on the cross. But you understand it was because of his operation, his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection, he created a whole new parameter of faith for me. In order for me to walk in that faith, I've got to keep my eyes on him. I can't get my eyes over here and worry about this or let this wait or let some sin come into my life to keep me from being able to do what I want to do through Jesus and what Jesus wants to do through me. So it's not some cute little saying, looking unto Jesus. It, it literally, listen, it literally is the way that you and I in real time, real world, live our lives. And you have to understand that and realize that in your life or you're going to get caught up in things you ain't got any business being caught up in. Listen to verse 3. I'm going to read this out of the uh, Passion Translation. Listen to this. Sorry, guys. So consider carefully how Jesus faced such intense opposition from sinners who opposed their own souls so that you won't become worn down and cave in under life's pressure. You have to realize, uh, I, I like the way the, the King James says this as well. It says, consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your soul. Listen to me today. We have all kinds of challenges in our lives right now. I got to tell you, when I was laying on that bed and didn't want to get up and didn't feel good and didn't want to eat, didn't, just laying there, I want to tell you something. There was a real temptation to get discouraged. To get discouraged. But you, that's not who we are. That's not how we live our lives. Why? Because we got somebody to look to. We've got a faith that works under all circumstances, under all situations. And we've got to understand and realize that, that we cannot allow ourselves to become weary and discouraged in our souls by what's going on around us, what may be happening in our lives. We can't allow that to happen because we, we don't have to be discouraged. We've got promises. We've got a Savior who's brought deliverance into our lives. We have the ability to believe Him and to see Him work and to see Him move and to see God do great things. He, looking to Jesus is a real world, real time responsibility for the believer. That's why we have to deal with the world as we go, okay? Remember verse 1, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Listen to what it says. Let us run our race, our race, your race, my race, with endurance. And that race is set before us, every one of us. Okay, we've, got, we've got a race to run. We have things that God wants us to do. And we have to run that race. 
But you've got to listen to what he said. In order to do that, you've got to lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily besets us. You've got to let that go. Listen to what, what <clears throat> the word there, lay aside, means that you have to put it away, cast it off, and you put it away from yourself. It is not yours anymore. One translation, one Greek translation says that you have to cease doing what you are accustomed to doing. You know, we got a lot of bad habits in the body of Christ. We've got, we've got to stop, stop some of those bad habits. And, and listen, it's your personal responsibility to do that. That's what the Word of God says. Otherwise, you're going to get discouraged. You're going to get discouraged. You're going to have to cease doing what you're accustomed to doing. <clears throat> Another one says to take or put something away from its normal location. The only way you're ever going to take some things out of your life is to put your focus on Jesus and what Jesus has done for you and what he's doing and can do and will do in your life and that you allow your faith to access that and grab hold of that in your life. Otherwise, you know what's going to happen? You are going to get discouraged in your soul. <clears throat> Passion says, worn down and cave in under life's pressures. You have to move away from every weight. That word there is encumbrance. It means a burden. It means a mass or a bulk that you've got to get out of your life. Something that weighs you down. I'm amazed, to be honest with you, how easily people can be weighed down. You want to get weighed down? Just watch a couple of hours of news. Well, I need to stay informed. Why? You know, I, I, Becky knows this. I don't watch the news. You know, now that doesn't mean I won't go click on a, a news source and read the headlines. Usually it's CBN. And read the headlines to find out, okay, yeah, I see, yeah, okay, that's going on, that's going on. Now, if there's some major thing, it, that's different. But, but the point is, you, you have got the capacity to declutter your life. You've just got to make up your mind you're going to do it. Some of you need to get off of Facebook. Because I've seen what you post. So, well, you're on there. Hey, Maybe once, once a week, two weeks, three weeks. My, my point is, listen to me. Everybody's got their own opinion about all kinds of stuff. And if you're not careful, you'll start getting weighed down by all of that. If you, if you don't know Jesus and know what Jesus can do and, and know that he is the, uh, the way, the truth, and the life, and that his word, uh, that, <clears throat> that he is the word that came alive for us, all we've got to do is keep our focus there, you'll find out that you're going to have trouble <coughs> if you can't do that. You can't carry the burdens of this life and look to Jesus at the same time. Don't tell me you can because you, you cannot because otherwise the Bible would not have said you can. You've got to get rid of this in order to look to Jesus. Amen. You've got to keep your focus in the, in the right spot. How do you do that? Well, number one, you read your Bible. Number two, you pray. You put yourself in a position to be shepherded. As a, and, and a lot of people don't like to hear that, but it's true anyway. Well, I don't need a shepherd. Oh, yeah, you do. The very fact you said that tells me you do.
Because we all, we all need to hear the voice of the good shepherd for sure. But you've got to understand that the, you, there, there, there needs to be that communion, that fellowship together. So listen to this. Looking unto Jesus gives you an alternative lifestyle. Right in the midst of the world, you can have an alternative lifestyle. You, can, you, you have to live in the world because we live here, okay? But you can have a different lifestyle. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11. Very familiar. Listen to this. Come to me, verse 28, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. And I, for I am gentle, lowly in heart, and you will find, listen to what it says, rest for your soul. If you don't have rest for your soul, you're not hooked up to the right thing. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus said, when you come to me, you labor. There's, the word there means you feel fatigue. You're getting weary. You're heavy laden. That means you're loaded up and burdened down. Jesus said, hey, I got news for you. I'll give you rest. That word there means, the Amplified Bible says, ease and relieve and refresh your soul. Isn't it interesting that it's not based on the circumstances of life? It's not based on the circumstances of life. It's in the middle of the circumstances of life. We can have that rest. We can have that relief. We can have that ease in our souls. But you've got to understand and realize, listen to me, that it comes in packages that we don't like. Let me give you an example. I'm not going to read all of this, but over in Acts... Chapter 27, <coughs> Paul is being taken as a prisoner to Rome to stand before Caesar. Okay? He's, he's, he's a prisoner. And so they, they're on this boat, and, and Paul said in Acts chapter 10, 27, verse 10, he said, I perceive that this voyage will end with disaster and much loss, not only of the cargo and ship, but also our lives. Now, now listen to me a minute, okay? Well, you know, Paul, he, you know, he should have just called on God to deliver him and he could have just walked away from that ship. And Well, no, no, he couldn't. He was stuck in a life circumstance, not of his own making. Y'all listen to what I'm saying. Yet he had to deal with the circumstances just like everybody else. See, let me tell you something. <clears throat> you, may, you may be, we all are living in this world. We're living in this country. And we're living in the midst of some crazy times and some th strange things and all kinds of difficulties that are going on right now. We're, li we're all living in that, okay? But do you know something? It's interesting that even though Paul said, oh, this is not good, it's bad. It's, it's bad. Did you know that it didn't deliver him from the, from the boat? It didn't deliver him from the storm? Now, we're talking about the Apostle Paul. Now, I know your faith is greater than his, and you think you can do something he didn't do, but, but just let me tell you something. Listen to me. You need to hear what I'm saying. Paul was stuck in a, in a boat that he already knew by the Holy Spirit was going to go down and everybody was going to die. <laughs> and he told them so. But you know what? They believed the weather report, number one. Okay. And they believed the captain of the ship and the owner of the ship. Because they all had invested interest in what was going on. So, Paul 
sails on this boat. How would you like to know I, I'm supposed to be doing the will of God and I'm fixing to die? Right in the middle of the ocean with these stupid people who are not listening to what I'm telling them. And I know by the Holy Ghost that they're going to die. <laughs> Listen to me. A lot of times you don't have a choice about what boat you're on. But you do have a choice about how you act on that boat and how you react on that boat. Because something happened here that, that was amazing to me, okay? Okay, <clears throat> it says in verse uh, 20 that all hope was gone. Perception-wise, all hope was gone. All hope was gone. But Paul said, you know what? I'm going to pray. And I'm not going to just pray for me and God get me out of this. I'm going to pray for that heathen bunch that put me on here. I'm going to pray for them that nobody will die. They didn't know what he was doing. They didn't understand what was going on, but he knew what was going on. Paul didn't sign up for what happened. He tried to stop them from not doing it. He had to deal with the circumstances that in the natural were beyond his control. <clears throat> Do you understand the power of prayer? You understand the power of your prayer in your family, in your circumstances, in our country, in, in all the things that are... Listen, you can pray. Well, I didn't sign up for this. Well, Paul didn't sign up for it either. He saw what was going to happen. Here's something I thought was interesting. When the storm got so bad and there was no hope, first thing they did, it says, was Paul said, you're going to have to lighten your load. You're going to have to lighten your load. And so they dumped all the stuff that they was so precious to them, so valuable to them, they dumped all, every bit of it overboard. Sometimes it's interesting that that deliverance from that storm is not going, listen to me, is not going to happen in your life until you are ready to get rid of your load. Things that you really think are important, but if you're honest about it, they're really hindering your life. You've got to make up your mind how you're going to handle it. Because that's, Paul said, hey, this is, this is it. And, and if you don't deal with it, <clears throat> so they said, well, all right, well, let's, let's, let's get rid of everything. So you know what, what happened? I'm not going to read this to you, but I'm going to just tell it to you. So Paul got up and said, y'all should have listened to me. Don't look at me so holy and think you wouldn't have said the same thing. You would have said the same thing. You should have listened to me. I told you by the Holy Spirit, you didn't listen. He said, but I just want to tell you something. An angel of God appeared to me. And he told me that you and I are going to live and not die. We're going to live and not die. And so you know what happened? It happened exactly the same way. Listen to me. The, very, the exact way that Paul, not the owner, <clears throat> not the captain, not the centurion that was at this point saying, yes, sir, to Paul. It was the apostle Paul. It was a believer in the midst of all that. 
you've got to realize and understand that it, two things. Number one, listen, if you're going to really see God do something in the middle of something that you don't even have any circumstance control over, the first thing you're going to have to do in your own life is get rid of your own weights. And the second thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to pray just like Job prayed for his accusers. They ripped Job up one side and down the other. They called him every name in the book, accused him of everything you can imagine. But you know what delivered Job and brought him to a place of prosperity in his life? He prayed for him. You've got to make up your mind how you're going to live your life in the storm, in the middle of something that you don't have any circumstance, you don't have any control over. It's not a blame game. Listen to me. How are you going to live your life? Are you going to get rid of the burdens? Are you going to get rid of all the excess, the things that would hold you back, that would weigh you down, that seem to be important? Or, and are you going to make up your mind? You're going to look to Jesus. Look away and look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. And once you make up your mind to do that, you're going to find out that God will work supernaturally. He loves, listen, he loves to work supernaturally in your life. He wants to work in your life right where you are right now today. Maybe you lost your job in the middle of this pandemic. Maybe it looks like things are going to get worse instead of better. Maybe you're struggling, you know, uh, with, with your finances, with your family, or whatever it may be. Let me tell you something. Jesus produced a faith that you can grab hold of that will work in any circumstance of your life. He still knows, listen, he knows how to multiply fish. Yeah. He still knows how to multiply fish. I remember years ago when I first got saved, I went to a, a, a meeting. It's a full gospel businessman in this meeting. And this man was t giving, telling the testimony about his, his mother and how that during the Great Depression, they didn't have <clears throat> anything to eat. And, and they would just have just a few strands of, of spaghetti and she'd boil that pot and she'd throw those in there and she'd start stirring that pot and thanking the Lord for provision. Thanking the Lord for provision. And she said she, she would take that pot with those few strands of spaghetti and she would serve and serve and serve and serve every one of them. Listen, that's available. Amen. Oh, it's going to be hard times. Yeah, well, listen, you like spaghetti? You have to understand that, that, that we may be on a ship <clears throat> that we're not have anything, anything to do with being on, but that doesn't mean that you can't become the captain of your own life and of what you do by your faith, by believing and laying aside every weight. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. That means you've got to pull together with him. You've got to learn his ways. You've got to, you've got to know what he will do. Because it says if you'll do that, then there will be ease, refreshment, and blessed quiet for your soul. Amen. Why? Because his burden is light. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. But here's the deal. Last point. Listen. Jesus made a statement in Matthew chapter 6, verse 21. No one can serve two masters. For either you will hate the one and love the other, or you'll be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. That word there, mammon, a lot of times is translated riches or money. But it, it literally can be anything of the world. You've got to make up your mind who you're going to serve. How are you going to live? How are you going to focus your life? Is it going to be focused on complaining about this and complaining about that? And, 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 uh, and if, a few weeks ago when I ministered about conspiracy, and all, are you going to live your life 
believe in God, even for those people that are on the boat with you who don't believe. What are you going to do with your life? First thing you got to do is get rid of your load. Lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset you. Listen to me. Once you do that, <clears throat> you put yourself in a position to be able to be a blessing, to minister to, to help other people. But you've got to make up your mind what you're going to do. You've got to make up your mind what you're going to do. There's no middle ground. You can't serve two masters. And, and I'm, I'm firmly convinced that this season that we're in, that the church is in, is a dividing. What are you going to choose? How are you going to live your life? How are you going to live your life? You've got to make up your mind. Because you can get trapped in so many different areas if you get your eyes off of Jesus. But if you keep your focus right there, no matter what happens, you're going to be able to operate in your faith because He's the author of our faith. He's the finisher of our faith. He's the one who set those parameters for us. Well, I just don't have any peace in my life. Well, Jesus said, speak to the, to the storm and the peace <clears throat> that passes all understanding will come. You, there's absolutely nothing you can tell me that you're dealing with that I can't tell you what Jesus has already solved for you, for me. So I just want to encourage you. Lay aside every weight. Dump them overboard. Get them out of your life. Don't let them be the focus of who you are. <clears throat> if, if you're seeing natural things and all they're doing is burdening you and weighing you down and making you mad and making you angry or getting you upset, you got a problem. Y you have a problem. Because that's not what God has for us. I believe that we, He wants us to enter into a season of the supernatural beyond anything we've ever seen. If we can just make ourselves lay aside the weight, lay aside all these things and let Him work in our lives, we can see something great happen. But if you get trapped on the wrong side of this thing, you'll never see it. You'll never see it. Father, I pray right now for every person under the sound of my voice. Father, whether they're watching online, whether they're here right now, Lord, I pray right now that you hear their voice as they cast their care over on you, as they lay aside the weights, the burdens of their lives right now. Come on, just tell the Lord. If, you, if you're troubled, if you're struggling with something, tell Him right now, Lord, forgive me. I, I let go of it. I'm not, it's not going to be part of my life. Release it. Release it. In Jesus' name. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, now's the time to call on Him. Because He'll not only ease your burden, He'll relieve you of it to where you can be free to live for Him and to serve Him and to see His glory in your life. Thank you, Father, for working today. Thank you that we look to your Son, Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith because we've got a race to run and we're going to finish it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Praise God. Thanks for connecting with us today on the podcast. And you know, we'd love to connect with you in person at one of our campuses in Shreveport, Louisiana, or in Lake Charles, Louisiana. You can get all the information from our website, lifeunited.church.